All right. Well, thank you, and uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to Tech Field Day. I would love to, to introduce myself. My name is Kevin Wollenweber, uh, and I run the product management teams for the core and edge uh, routing for, for Cisco, uh, mainly focused on products like the ASR9K, 5500. I get the pleasure of kicking off and kind of leading into some of the topics that we'll talk about today. Um, so without that, I'll just jump right in. We just released the latest uh, VNI study. So Cisco produces a VNI study. You know, we look into our customer networks and we look at and project what we think is going to happen in some of these networks uh, over the next few years. And so when you look out, you know, we see an explosion of not just bandwidth, which is what we usually talk about, but also users uh, and devices uh, on the internet. And so by 2022, we expect to see uh, 4.8 billion users, um, which is you know, roughly two thirds of the world, now able to access the internet and, and use the technologies that we're delivering. So that, that proves uh, you know, to obviously help a lot of emerging countries and economies, but it also changes the way our service providers have to build networks. Um, clearly with, with IoT and industrialization, we see a lot more devices coming on the network. You know, with, with 7 billion people and you know, 20 plus billion devices, obviously there's gonna be a lot more on the network than just your devices. I'm looking around the room, everyone here has three, four, five devices connected right now. Uh, it'll continue to grow like that, and so we have to look at the impact that that has across the network. Uh, faster broadband speeds, I think here in the U.S., these speeds might look like they're reasonably fast, but when I talk to my customers outside the United States and, and across the world, you know, gigabit services are easy to come by in a lot of countries today. And then clearly, a lot of that traffic is becoming video. So we look at today, you know, over three-fourths of the traffic is video, but moving forward, we see that being 80, 90 percent of the traffic being delivered. So the interesting phenomenon there is extremely high bandwidth and having to build out networks at much lower cost to be able to drive the infrastructure to, to be ready for, for that uh, bandwidth growth. I put some other stats in because I think some of these stats are interesting. Uh, I, will, I will say something interesting that my son told me when I ran through this with him yesterday, but you know, we see 58% of that traffic being video downstream, but that traffic is shifting to, to more than just rich media and video. Um, and the gaming one is interesting to me. I have a 13-year-old son, plays a lot of video games. I showed him this slide because I thought it was cool. I talked about how you know, Black Ops, if you look at Black Ops 3, Call of Duty, it's, it's over 100 gig download, and that's the equivalent of over 14 hours of 4K streaming video. Uh, he quickly said, well, that game's old, the newer games are better, and they're actually larger, so you should update your slides, so I'll get that done before the next one of these. But it's interesting to see how you know, not just video is driving that bandwidth, but gaming, downloads, you know, outside of the US, you look at uh, APJ, you see a lot more than just um, the big names in video, you see a lot of, of generalized streaming of, of video and other technologies. So it's not just video driving traffic, but traffic is continuing to grow. And so we have to look at ways of simplifying the network operations, simplifying the networks themselves, and being able to grow with that traffic and that bandwidth that we see in the network. So this is just a view of, of what our service providers see. You can see relatively flat uh, OPEX. You can see relatively flat to, to even declining uh, CAPEX. And at the same time, you see bandwidth continuing to grow. And so this is the phenomenon that our service providers are trying to deal with now is, how do I meet the needs and the bandwidth needs of the network that's growing over the next few years um, with the networks that I've built, some of them you know, over the last 15 or 20 years? And so really, the stuff we'll talk about today is around simplifying the operations of the network, simplifying how we build the network itself, and enabling us to build much, much higher bandwidth, much more resilient networks from new sets of tools and technologies that are available today. Uh, the other interesting characteristic is how the bandwidth is actually moving throughout the network. Uh, I've been doing this for 21 years now, um, always focused on the high-end service provider networks. And if you look, when we built networks 20 years ago, we were building massive core networks and, and you know, connecting in the US, connecting all the large NFL cities, back then OC192, OC768, um, now obviously it's 100 gig E. But as we built those out, all the traffic was traversing the large cores of, of, of most of our service providers. Today, when you look at where peering is happening, you look at edge caching, you look at the move towards you know, pushing more and more of, of the video and, and Google caches and other things into the edges and the metros of the network, more and more of that traffic is becoming metro and edge defined. As we look forward towards far edge computing and some of the things we talk about with 5G, we see even more of that happening. 
And so as that shifts, we see the, the edges of the network or the metros of a lot of our customers actually growing at a much faster rate than, than the cores were in the past. It doesn't mean the cores aren't growing, it just means the rate of change or the rate of growth in that metro is actually much, much faster. So as we move towards uh, you know, high, de high density ethernet based devices, seeing things like 100 gig E and even 400 gig E in the metros of, of, of a lot of my big service providers is what we're gonna see over the next couple years. So what does this mean to, to Cisco and to Cisco's strategy? And what I'm going to try to do is kind of set up, I think, some of the topics that you'll hear about in a lot more detail later. But really, the main message that I give to service providers when I talk to them today is about simplicity. And, and simplifying means everything from you know, trying to move to a, to a much more consistent set of devices across the network. Um, simplification means simplifying protocols. So a lot of us have built networks for the last 25 years. Um, multiple evolutions of protocols, stitching different protocols together, uh, companies buying other companies and having to, to try to merge different networks. So we've actually built what, what now are fairly complex network infrastructures. And so a lot of what we'll talk about today when we talk about SR or, or EVPN is about simplifying the control planes and simplifying the delivery of some of those services to enable us to actually grow the networks bigger and faster. You know, growing on top of complexity is hard. Simplifying layers and then actually kind of uh, horizontally scaling out these networks in, in usable and manageable building blocks is much simpler. And so that's why it's not only simplifying portfolio, simplifying protocols, but also simplifying architectures. Uh, and, and these are things that we'll talk about today in, in, the, in the later sessions. So with that being said, we're going to build out these massive networks. We're going to build them out for 5G and for IoT and all these new services. But trust and security is becoming increasingly uh, high priority on, on service providers' lists as we look at building out these networks. So uh, we'll have a presentation later around, around security. But you know, really, when we look at a device, this is now trusted infrastructure. You know, this is what's running. It's not just the internet and, and people searching for cat videos and, and fun stuff like that. I mean, this is running 911 major business services for customers. So it's now critical infrastructure. We have to look to secure that infrastructure. And it goes way beyond just things like DDoS. You're looking at actually trusted protection modules on devices, signing software, knowing that everything that's running on these devices is genuine. These are all things that we're investing in today as we build out what's going to be the trusted infrastructure of the future. And then on top of that, we have a, a simple network. Um, we now have a trusted and secure network. So then we'll continue to deliver high bandwidth, high density devices. When we say mass scale, really what we're talking about is the ability to take the network devices and, and technologies we're delivering and deliver them at, at, at cloud scale, at, at, at horizontal scaling bandwidths to meet those bandwidth needs that we talked about in the beginning. And then the last thing is, if I'm going to build out larger networks, if I'm going to have more devices in the network, if I'm going to scale out horizontally, we can no longer manage these networks in a manual uh, fashion. So no more CLI, no more screen scraping, no more scripts grabbing things off of routers. We really need to move to a world where you know, devices are put in the network, zero touch provisioning, come up, understand what they're supposed to do, and, and start participating in the network. Um, we need to look at technologies like streaming telemetry to bring things off of, of the network devices. When you think about a network, the network is the largest source of data about what's actually happening in the infrastructure. And we get a very small percentage of that data off the network in real time with the ability to actually operate on that data. So by moving to something like streaming telemetry, I can get much more information off the routers. Uh, I can get it much more efficiently. And I have a lot more data to do something with. So, so you'll see a lot more move towards not just automated operations and telemetry, but also tools. Um, Cisco has a set of tools that we've launched called Crosswork that will actually build a, a data collection service, bring that data off the network, and then applications that'll sit on top of that, that collection service and actually do interesting things on the network. Make sense? I know it's early, coffee's going, but uh, feel free to pause and ask questions if you need. So, so when I look at, at that mass scale portion of the network, this is really the area that, that I'm invested in. Um, I look at my technology strategy across five different domains. The first one is really building systems that are optimized for these new architectures that we see coming into the network. And so if, the interesting thing for me as, as a network vendor is almost every part of the network that I see and that I touch is evolving over the next couple years. 
You, know, you hear about 5G, everybody in the mobility space talks about 5G. Clearly that's an interesting one for us and an area where we see a huge amount of investment. But beyond just 5G, you look at, at what's happening in the cable space with remote Fi. You look at the amount of bandwidth bring, being brought into the network with Pawn and other technologies. You look at just the generalized metro infrastructure. And if, if we're really going to do uh, caching and, and video delivery and service delivery further out in the edge in the metro, metro aggregation networks are going to have to be rebuilt to handle that bandwidth. And so as all of these different um, access and aggregation technologies evolve, you know, we really need to look at building different devices that are optimized for, for handling that amount of traffic and handling that amount of growth. So based on, on these principles of, of architecture, what do we need to do across the portfolio to actually serve those? Um, Cisco invests heavily in optics. You know, we, we think optics and optical technologies are going to drive a lot of that metro infrastructure build. You know, obviously, with the, the announcement of the acquisition of, of Luxterra, um, we're, we're investing heavily in that, in that optics space. Uh, as we move from 100 gig optics to 400 gig and beyond, these are difficult technologies. This is not an easy uh, business to be in. And specific investments in, in technologies are what are going to enable us to, to grow that bandwidth and, and grow the technologies to, to adapt to, to future. Systems, we'll continue to invest in silicon. We'll continue to invest in systems. Um, the interesting thing for me is I feel like systems today are almost table stakes. So looking across the networking vendors, we all have to deliver higher bandwidth, you know, better power efficiency, better cost efficiency to, to meet these needs and, and bandwidth needs of our customers. But at the same time, uh, we have to invest in other areas to make them viable. Just having systems is no longer going to get you, you know, the, the right space in the market or the right share in the market. So we're evolving every part of our portfolio now, 5500s, 9Ks. We have future technologies that we're investing in today. And, and assume that you know, Cisco is a big router vendor. We're going to continue to build big routers. But really, the focus today is not on the systems, but on the technologies that sit around those systems. So a lot of the conversations you'll hear today are around uh, V6, segment routing, EVPN, because those are the foundation for how we want our customers to build out their networks. We'll continue to build more efficient, more cost efficient, more power efficient technologies to slide into that. But, but that, that overarching foundation of, of software building blocks is really what we see being critical moving forward. Uh, and then lastly, we couldn't do this without automation. So you'll see a heavy push in the market for automating our networks, automating the you know, day zero, day one deployments of the networks, but also uh, automating the day two and the, and the more operational aspects of the network itself. No more people touching devices directly. People touching tools, tools managing devices is, is really where we want to see things going. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about what some of those tools are. So silicon, we still think, is going to drive the industry. Although you know, I said we have to have technologies in the market. And you know, to be relevant in this market as a routing vendor, you have to build uh, more efficient routing systems. Um, we actually have no real religion around what that technology is. So we have technologies based on merchant silicon. We have technologies based on custom silicon. Um, we've acquired some ASIC assets uh, over the last few years, which will enable us to continue to evolve some of that custom silicon. But really what we're after is building a common set of building blocks with the best technologies for our customers. So whether that's merchant technology, custom technology, or something yet to be determined, uh, we'll continue to do that. And the focus is really on abstracting those, those technologies so that you can deploy the right hardware co software combination wherever it makes the most sense. If you need a high density 100 gig uh, aggregation router, you know, we have that. If you need a high density edge router, we have that. But it's really that interface into the router when we start to look at automation, open config, uh, netconf and yang based data models, building a, uh, an abstraction layer that allows us to deploy the right systems in the right place at the right time in the simplest way possible so that we can innovate and, and actually more rapidly move through these technology cycles. So we have evolutions of, of all of these different uh, systems that we have in the ground today, and we're continuing to invest in, in more systems moving forward. Uh, and last, this was just meant to be a, a teaser to, to get into the other conversations, but I'd like to talk about all of the transformations that we're going to see in networks over the next couple years. So if you look at technology, you know, I told you I've been at Cisco for 21 years, always in the service provider space. The next couple of years for me is really going to be where we see the most rapid evolution and, and change. You know, we're going from networks that we've been running on mainly 10 gig for the last 10 years. We've shifted to 100 gig. We're seeing a, you know, the knee of the curve in 100 gig deployments now. 
Uh, most of the ports that we sell on our high-end routing system today are actually 100 gig. Uh, and we're going to see that evolve very, very quickly over the next two years to 400 gig. So when we see new systems coming into the network over, the, uh, over 2019, we'll have optimized systems for, for 400 gig, optimized systems for dense 100 gig, uh, and we really see a, a shift quickly in our customer base towards these technologies. Um, traffic engineering, you know, we've been doing a lot of things in the network the same way for the last 20 years. When we start to look at how the network scales out for the next 10, some of the technologies that we've built inherently don't scale as well in the network. They add more state to the network, they're more complex to operate, uh, they're more complex um, when it comes to how I have to build the devices to manage traffic engineering state. So when we look forward towards segment routing, SRTE, these do a couple things for the network. They simplify the network, they make it easier to operate, but they also enable me to build more efficient routing systems because I don't have to do things like keep state for hundreds of thousands of midpoint tunnels in a core P-type device. By, by taking that requirement away from me, I can actually build much more efficient systems. Uh, so so it, it helps both sides. It helps the, the, the vendors themselves, the equipment vendors, and it also helps my customers as they build out more efficient networks. Um, availability is interesting. So we're, I know we're going to talk a little bit about fabrics and fabric-type architectures. You know, we're seeing a big move towards horizontal scaling architectures, similar to what we see in, in data center, leaf spine type networks. It's a simple mathematical principle. You, know, you, have, you have spines, you have leafs connected, you can build these building blocks and scale out horizontally. It really enables us to build more network level redundancy into those metro aggregation architectures, um, similar to, to, to the reason why we built those in the data center. So you'll, you'll hear more about that today. Um, really, we want to be able to, to scale up the network and scale down the network. Sometimes I talk about things and, and you know, systems, and we have systems that are you know, tens of terabits, approaching hundreds of terabits in some cases. A lot of people will look at that and say, I don't need that amount of bandwidth in my network. That's not right for the size network I'm building. So the other thing we're really focused on is being able to scale up and scale down the network elements. You know, if you think about a, a fabric type architecture, if you think about systems, you know, if I can build the, the biggest systems I have and the smallest systems I have and leverage common silicon across them, get feature compatibility across them. If you're building a small network, you build from small devices, big network build from big devices, but I get consistency across. And so you'll start to see a lot more of that across the, the portfolio. And then obviously the last thing I wanted to end with is just automation. We need to see a bigger push in, in our customer networks around automating the network infrastructure, leveraging streaming telemetry and other tools and technology to pull information off the network, and we can make the networks much more efficient. So, so we'll deliver tools and technologies to help you do that, but we're really seeing a push towards wanting to, to automate and, and lower that OPEX cost of running the network within our customer base. So hopefully this was a good kind of tee off to, to the following presentations. Um, if you have any comments, questions, if anything's coming in from the live feeds, please let me know, otherwise, uh, Thanks a lot for letting me kick off. Okay. Yeah, please. So going back to the, one of the comments, you had the CapEx slide up there, which I thought yeah. was interesting. That was showing the CapEx spend from service providers yeah. and that the bandwidth demands are going exponentially up, but the CapEx is yeah. not really shifting a whole lot. So what's the strategy from Cisco when you're faced with competitors that are offering lower per port yeah. costs for different things because the service providers are looking at this vast scale of gear that they've got to roll out and they've got a specific amount of CapEx. What's the strategy for Cisco to, to deal with that curve going up like that with CapEx being yeah. flat? No, that, that's a great question. Uh, so we, we kicked off a, a new portfolio about in, in early 2016, the NCS 5500. Mm -hmm. Really the entire aim of that portfolio was to address a market which was very high bandwidth, uh, 100 gig optimized aggregation. And so by leveraging different forwarding technologies, we're able to build extremely high density systems uh, at, at different cost points, at different power points, and at different efficiency points. So that, that message I was giving before of being able to take different building blocks, hopefully a couple building blocks, not 100 building blocks, but sure. being able to take a few building blocks and build systems that are a little bit more optimized for certain roles. Because in, in edge applications, in subscriber management applications, we still see a need for high touch, you know, ASICs that are extremely functional and extremely scalable in aggregation and in pulling forward some of the, you know, the metro ethernet growth we were talking about before, I need high density 100 gig and the functionality uh, and scale is probably a little bit lower in those areas. So building optimized devices uh, in those spaces allow us to meet the, the cost and bandwidth points that we need. Okay.